Have you ever wondered how AI-based computer vision can actually save you money on your shop floor? Everything from virtualizing sensors to computer-based quality inspection, all the way to position control of devices. In this deep dive video, I take you through practical use cases of computer vision AI on the shop floor, from classification models to quality inspection to object detection. And all of this technology actually saves you money on your shop floor while increasing the quality output. For the past 20 years, I've been in the trenches building production lines across the world. This channel is where I share my hands-on experience with anyone looking to make a real impact in their factories. Whether you're a plant executive, an engineer on the floor, or anyone eager to expand their knowledge on this transformative topic. Let's dive in. So I'm going to divide this topic up into three different videos. The first one is going to focus in on computer vision. The second one is going to focus in on big data and the last one is going to focus in on large language models and natural language processing. There's a lot of detail I'm going to dive into and as I said I'm going to start off with computer vision. So what is computer vision? So I thought this is a really good explanation and a good place to start using the human body. So obviously we have an eye which is essentially this, the sensor in which we'll be using to capture the image or the environment. We obviously have the brain that is going to interpret all of that information from the sensor and obviously the output, as you can see over here, is a bowl of oranges, bananas and lemons and peaches. And so this is the same structure that we would adopt on a computer vision system on the shop floor. Basically it would consist of the camera, which is the sensing device, your computer, uh, which is the interpreting device, and the output is obviously the same, a bowl of bananas, oranges, lemons and peaches. So this is a good explanation, mapping how computer vision works. To start off with, there are three types of computer vision that I'm going to focus in on. The first one is uh, classification models, then I'm going to uh, dive into uh, quality inspection, and then I'm going to dive into object detection, which I think is the biggest opportunity for computer vision on the shop floor. So let's start off with uh, classification models. So classification models. Imagine a scenario on a factory where we have three different types of rooms that need to be fitted in a factory and we wanted to create a solution for a picking system to determine where a room needs to be placed. So what we would do is we would take thousands of images of each of the rooms and classify them. In other words, label them room type 1, room type 2, room type 3. And we would take thousands of images with different lighting conditions, different angles, as many images as what we can. This is where we say the data. So the more data we have, in other words, the more images we have, to train a model or an algorithm that is able to distinguish between type 1, type 2, type 3. And I'm not going to get into the nuances on how to train the models. The, the goal of this uh, video is, to, is not that. However, this is the principle of what you would do to train a model. Once you've trained your model or your algorithm, you can now use that to determine which rim is actually being looked at. So for example, if you place the camera at type 1 rim, the output of the model will be type 1. And a practical use case of this is, for example, if you have a robot picking solution that now needs to pick rims from a different conveyor with many different types of rims coming on it, and you want to organize the rims into different uh, dunnages, for example. Here is an example where you could uh, use the camera to tell the robot which rim is being picked so that the robot can then put the rim into the right dunnage based on the type that has been presented to the robot. So this is a very simple example of how classification models can be used on the shop floor. The next couple of slides are examples of where we've used classification models to help augment and make our production lines more effective. So this one is a very interesting one. So one of the important things on a production line, in particular uh, an axle assembly line, is to know the orientation of the pallet or the workpiece carrier as we call it. So you want to know if it's orientation one or orientation two. And uh, over here, what you can see is we've got a classification model that is determining that the current state of this workpiece carrier is in orientation one. And as I play the video, we turn the workpiece carrier around, and based on the classification model, we can now determine that it is now no longer in orientation one, and it is now in orientation two. So this is an example of a virtual sensor we've now created using computer vision to determine the orientation of a pallet that's carrying an axle. Another example is also very important on an axle assembly line is to determine whether these corner supports, as you can see, there's a colleague of mine uh, holding this corner support, and we want to make sure that corner support is always off beyond this particular station. So as you can see, the corner is actually in place and the, the model is telling us NOK, in other words, not OK. 
And on the left hand side, you see the OK box. In other words, there's no corner support in place. This is telling us that the scenario on the left hand side of this axle is actually good. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to play this video and my colleague is actually going to put the corner in place, which is not what we want. And you can see the model is now telling us that it is not OK. And this is exactly one, what we want to detect. And so again, this is the, basically the virtualization of a part and play sensor. So typically here we would have a laser sensor or some other kind of sensor to detect that the corner support is not in place. But now we can replace that with uh, computer vision. Another critical thing on production lines is knowing the orientation of parts that get fitted. And one of the most important parts, uh, at least in the world I come from, is the orientation of what we call a link arm. So this is this banana-shaped part that gets fitted onto many different types of axles. And over here you can see it, the computer vision model has actually determined that the link arm is now in the correct position and the output is correct. And in this scenario, you see there's a bolting tool in place. So the operator is now putting the bolting tool in place to tighten on that bolt. And only when it is, the model is outputting correct do we switch the bolting tool on. This is a way we can digitally pokey yoke the process so that if the link arm is in the wrong orientation, the bolting tool is not enabled. And I'll play a video for you here where on the other side uh, of the axle, uh, the link arm is in the wrong position. And in this case, it's saying other. Uh, in other words, it's not OK. In this state, we would always disable the bolting tool. And so the operator is not able to tighten the bolt. And this is how we can digitally pokey yoke the process using computer vision. So that's a high level summary of opportunities that classification models offer on the shop floor. It is essentially the virtualization of part and play sensors. And the big advantage is if I have one camera in the station, I can create uh, numerous different types of sensors without any wiring, with no cabling, uh, no PLC programming required to enable and disable the sensors, etc. And so by just installing one camera, I can make literally many different uh, virtual sensors that can detect different things. The next thing I'm going to move on to is quality inspection. So how can computer vision help us with quality inspection? To help me with this, I'm actually going to borrow some information from two different vendors, because I think they have some very interesting content out there. The first one is uh, a company called Musashi. It's a Japanese slash US based organization. And these guys focus very much on computer vision as a quality inspection tool. So here's an example of a camshaft, which is extremely difficult to, to check using the human eye. And as you can see, they've created computer vision models to detect for imperfections in the surface of the camshaft, which I, trust me, speaking from my experience, this is an extremely difficult thing to do and a very difficult thing to get consistent using human inspection. And these guys have been able to create uh, different models that are able to detect the imperfections um, on a camshaft. Very cool stuff for sure. They've also done some other stuff in the quality inspection space where they, for example, are looking for defects in a bolt. As you can see over here, there's a defected bolt uh, with a lot of debris um, on the threads and they were able to detect that using a, a, a classification model. And they can even determine where on the bolt the debris is or the imperfections are. What they've also done that's pretty cool is they can actually determine a heat map. So taking inspections of hundreds of bolts, create a heat map of where the, the biggest problems are uh, during that inspection process, which allows the engineers to be able to go and fault find more specifically uh, and solve the, the most frequent problems first. Next set of pictures are going to come from another company called um, Qualitas. Um, I have no association to these companies at all. I've had a meeting, uh, a couple of meetings with uh, Musashi. I've had, never, had no contact with Qualitas, but I've looked at a lot of their content on the internet and I think it's pretty interesting. And they've got a very interesting use case. So one of the important things in manufacturing is fitting of circlips as an example. So here's a shaft that needs to be locked in place with a circlip. And as you can see, they're using computer vision for quality inspection. On the left hand side, you can see the circlip is in place. And on the, on the right hand side, the circlip is completely missing. And so obviously the green means good and red means bad. They also are able to measure distances of the circlip. So you could get a scenario where a circlip is in place. However, it's not clipped in place correctly. And they're also able to detect the, the distance between the clips. Uh, and that is a qualification of good or bad. And these are just some examples uh, of companies. And there are many different companies out there that are using computer vision as a quality inspection tool. I now want to move on to uh, object detection. So object detection, in my opinion, is probably the most exciting opportunity that computer vision uh, presents for the shop floor. So object detection uh, at its core is essentially creating models or algorithms 
that are able to determine from an image or a live video feed what is in the image and the position of that object in the image. So this is an example of an image of a man with a bicycle and a dog. And you can see the output of the object detection model is a man and the size of the bounding box and the position of the bounding box around that particular man, uh, as well as the dog, as well as the bicycle. And so the difference between classification and object detection is that we're now able to determine multiple objects inside the image or this video stream, as well as its position. And that becomes a very powerful tool for us uh, on the shop floor to determine positions of tools, objects, parts, etc. So here's some examples. So this is a critical process in the manufacture of a car is tightening on the dust cover of a, an axle. So what's important here is the sequence in which we tighten on the dust cover. And also very important is that if there is a failure of one of the four bolts, we want to know which bolt has failed so that we can undo that bolt and redo that particular bolt. So what we've done here is we've created a model of the bolting tool. And you see that denoted by the three dots. And only when the bolting tool goes into the, to the correct region of interest denoted by the red square do we enable the bolting tool. And as you can see over here, the operator is now tightening on the bolts in the correct sequence. And if, for example, this third bolt fails, we know exactly it was a third bolt that failed. And we can then switch the tool to reverse and only undo the third bolt. And if the operator goes to the second bolt and, does, uh, and switches to undo, uh, we actually don't enable the bolting tool. And so this is a very, very powerful example of how object detection, in other words, determining the position of a bolting tool can be used uh, to really optimize in, and ensure the quality of a product being produced. Here's another example, a similar process, but in this case, we've added a target to the bolting tool. And here the operator needs to tighten on seven different bolts in a very distinct sequence. So here we're de detecting the position of the bolting tool. And only when the bolting tool is in the right position do we enable the bolting tool to switch on. So he has to go to B1, B2, B3, etc. in the right sequence. And that's really critical to determine the quality of the product being produced. So this is another example of a bolting tool. However, the, the opportunity doesn't lie only with bolting tools. We can also detect the hand as an example. So one of the most common uh, pokey oaks on a shop floor is pick to light. So you want to make sure that the operator is picking the right component from the right bin. Uh, and over here you can see we've created a, uh, an object detection model and regions of interest of, in other words, where the different part bins are. And only when the hand goes into the right bin do we enable the sequence to continue. So here's a short video uh, of me putting my hand in and out a bin. Uh, and you can see the object detection detecting which bin I've gone into. And we can obviously output that to the control system of the station to take the appropriate action, either allow it to continue or allow it to stop. And interestingly, as you can see over here, uh, I'll replay the video, it was able to detect my hand with the glove on, but you'll see at the end, when I put my hand in without the glove, there's no detection. And this is an additional layer that we've added on top of the, the solution to detect that operators are wearing the appropriate uh, protective e uh, equipment, in this case gloves. So the station doesn't actually operate unless the operator has got gloves on. Um, and this is another, let's say, a secondary opportunity that object detection uh, presents us. Another example of where we want to detect the position of objects is a barcode scanner. Um, many of our customers want to ensure that the barcode scanner is actually back in place, so for 5S reasons. So here you can see we've got an object detection model that's detecting the position of a barcode scanner. We only enable the next operation when the barcode scanner has actually been put back in place. Um, and this is, uh, for me, one of the coolest ones is what we call a virtual push button. So over here what we've done is we've actually put a little sticker on the station and using the same object detection model for the hand, we are creating a region of interest around the sticker and so we can now virtualize a push button. So when the finger goes into the area of interest, we're able to signal to the station that it's a push button being pressed. This is how we can reduce the hardware in the station by virtualizing a lot of hardware. So typically, uh, there'd be a physical push button or pick to light sensors or complex encoders to detect the position of bolting tools. The use of object detection really reduces the hardware requirement on the station, actually reduces the cost of the station uh, because we're now virtualizing position control uh, and we can feed the position of different objects and devices back to the control system to take the appropriate action. 
And to conclude this section on computer vision, I actually want to play a video uh, for you where we've actually built a station that's completely PLC-less, completely cable-less, except for the bolting tool, where we're able to build and assemble a cylinder head cover completely using computer vision and control the process together with the worker guidance system that is integrated into the computer vision system. So the first thing it's telling me to do is actually fit an ID badge into the station. And as you can see, we have three options, operator, supervisor, and maintenance. Operator tags are only able to build parts. Supervisor is able to undo parts, and maintenance has access to maintenance functions. For now, I'm just going to use the supervisor badge, put it in. And the next thing it's telling me to do is actually scan the workpiece carrier. I'm going to do that, and this is basically uh, identifying the unique product in the station. This could be either done by RFID tag, it could be done by barcode scan, as I'm going to do over here. What it's now done is actually identified the variant. It's now telling me the next steps to do. It's telling me that I can actually go pick components, but you see it doesn't work uh, unless I've actually got the, the safety gloves on. So this is one way we can ensure that uh, our PPE is being used correctly. So once I've got the gloves on, it's obviously telling me that I can pick the component off the bin. If I go into the wrong bin, uh, it starts flashing red, telling me that I'm in the wrong bin. If I go to the right bin, um, it obviously tells me I've picked the right part. So then it's telling me very clearly on the screen to fit the first bolt. I'm going to fit the first bolt and then press the virtual button. As you can see, it's actually not a physical button. It's actually a virtual button. We're using computer vision to, deter to, to determine uh, the position of my finger over that virtual button. It's now telling me to fit the second bolt, which I'm going to do. Press the virtual button and then it's going to tell me to pick a uh, different kind of bolt from the second bin. Detected that, telling me exactly where to put it and I can put it into in the right position. Uh, and then press the virtual complete button. What it's now telling me to do is obviously pick the right socket and as you can see I've got two options of socket. I need to pick socket one, telling me socket one. If I pick the wrong socket, it detects that and it's actually not telling me, it's not allowing the station to continue. So it's kind of like a digital pokey oak. Um, once I pick the right socket, it detects that and obviously I need to put the socket onto the bolting tool and then I can move the bolting tool into position. Important to note here is that the bolting tool is completely disabled and it, I need to go to the right position in order to enable the bolting tool. So the yellow flashing light is telling me where to go. If I go to the wrong position, it's completely disabled. Only when I go into the right position, go solid blue, and then I'm able to tighten the bolt. And if I pull out of, out of uh, the position, the bolting tool is completely disabled, then I fail the bolt. Obviously, then when I go back into position, it detects that and allows me to actually continue. And then similarly, I need to tighten the second bolt. So when I go into position, the tool is enabled. If, if I go to the previous one, completely disabled, only enabled when I go to the right position. And this way we are able to control the sequence in which you tighten bolts. And this is all done by the computer vision system we call Odin Phantom. It's not telling me to put the socket back. Obviously 5S is really important, making sure we put the tools back in the right positions. So I put the tool back, it detects that, and now tells me to take the next socket. I've taken the next socket and it's not telling me to bolt the bolts. So similarly, put the socket into position. Again, the tool is completely disabled. If I go to the wrong position, it's completely disabled. Wrong position, completely disabled. When I go to the right position, it's enabled. As you can see, it's gone solid blue. And then I can tighten the bolt. We've obviously logged the torque and angle uh, through that process, and it's now allowing me to go to the second position. Ah, oh, I forgot to put the socket back. The socket back. Put the bolting tool back, press the virtual complete button, and then it's printed out a pass label, which I can then take. And what's very important in this process is I stick the pass label in the right place. So the blue light is telling me where to put the pass label. And what I do is, when I put it in the right position, the cameras detect that and allows it to go to the next sequence. The last step is actually scanning the barcode. And once I've done that, it logs the process and then I'm passed. So that brings me to the conclusion of the computer vision section. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about uh, using data on the shop floor more effectively. Stay tuned for that.